Good afternoon, everyone. Ryan Tonkin here from the Black Room at T3. Uh, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, I want to do a video on why I look to trade gaps at the open. All right, so I had uh, only two trades today. Both of them were right at the open, um, and uh, that's all I took. The uh, Here's the two trades. So I had two winners, uh, the AMAT and the JWN. Uh, and the last exit on the A mat was uh, at 1010, but that and it was roughly break even. So uh, this was right around 540 bucks, 543 dollars, I think, um, in the two trades at the open, and that's all I took today, right? This was the the total here for the two trades. Um, the JWN, I took all the position I could have trailed a. Uh, could have left some more, uh, so I did leave a little bit of money on the table, but I made a conscious decision to take all of the JWN, and um, that was it. I had a couple things scheduled today, uh, so I knew it was going to be a little bit of a busy day today, and uh, I was I was okay with that. Two trades in, I mean, most of the money I made in 10 minutes, literally, I think. I didn't even think it was that quick. Uh, yeah. 941 here 11 and a half minutes right uh, and the reason why I want to do this video was because one my number one strategy is going after professional gaps and the reason being is because we normally get a lot of movement at the open and so if you are good in your gap analysis and good at your pattern recognition at the open, then there's a lot of possibilities um, to trade. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities in professional or novice gaps. All right. Uh, so let's dive in here and take a look. We're going to look at the JW1 and the AMAT. Um, one thing I want to say before we start here was I knew that I wanted to trade the JWN, the AMAT, the DF. And the um, there's one more A T G E. Okay, I knew that I wanted to trade these four stocks before the open even uh, came at 9:30. I knew I wanted to trade these two stocks probably at around nine o'clock. Um, the D F I probably made my decision a little bit later uh, because I was watching it pre market. But these were the four stocks. One long, three shorts that I had was focused on when the open came. All right. So, and the reason why I want to bring that up is because in, before the market opens in the black room, we go over the gaps and we develop a hot list, and that's what I'm doing. I, I generate my gaps list from the other members of the room, from some scanning uh, that I do before the market opens, and we compile together a gaps list of stuff that we're going to go after, And because when the open happens, things happen pretty quickly, and so it's important to uh, stay focused and know which stocks you're going to go after. Okay, so an important note for me was these were the four stocks that I wanted to go after, three shorts, one long. And today, I ended up catching two, which I kind of had my hands full a little bit when the JWN triggered because I was a little bit, I was already in the AMAT, um, but we'll we'll take a look at that, those, okay? So one of the important things is knowing what you're going to do before you have to make the decision, right? And that smooths out the decision-making process a lot. Okay, so... And how we do that is, and actually, I'll show you. Here's my, uh, here's my gap ups list, right? Gap ups that I was looking at, and you'll see the JWN is second from the bottom, of significant gaps that I was looking to play, and here's my gaps down list, right? And we have the AMAT, the DF, and the ATGE are on there as well. Okay, so and then I carry that list throughout the entire day. And I, I use that list and build my watch list. These are the watch lists that I use throughout the whole day. Okay, so uh, let's look at the first one that triggered is the AMAT, okay? So I put out in the chat that the AMAT did a 1, 2, 3, the negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 lower on the one-minute chart right at the open. Okay, so 
my platform's a little bit slow here. Okay. Um, AMAT, professional gap down, just below the support area here. One time frame larger, weekly chart, rolling over on the weekly chart, right? At a weekly sell setup, confirming the weekly sell setup through a professional gap down, okay? That's the daily chart, top down approach, and that's all the information I had roughly was this is get this was gapping somewhere between uh, forty four fifty and forty five dollars pre market, and so that's what I was looking to go after. Okay, now we go to the one minute chart here, and if I can go, let me make this bigger here. Okay, here's the one minute chart. Let me throw my fills on here. Okay, here's the one minute chart and here's the entry here. Wide range bar, inside bar, bounced off this $44. We talked about this in the black room because we really kind of dove into the uh, entry, this one, two, three entry. But we bounced off this 144 area. This was a bottoming tail, uh, this one minute candle at one point, And then the short was under $44. Stop where? Right above this bottoming tail here, right? And yesterday talked about wide range bars, doji bars, and what I need with wide range, wide, wide range bars, right? So we get a one minute wide range bar here, inside bar, short just below that, right? We were just talking about this yesterday with wide range bars and what I look for. Okay, uh, so similar concept as the STZ that we had yesterday, right? STZ. Uh, five minute short on the STZ. Five minute short breakdown and then the exits, right? So wide range bar, base sideways, and then the breakdown. Okay. All right. So back to the AMAT. We'll jump over here to the one minute chart again. So we got the wide range bar, the inside bar, and then that was the one, two, three that I put out in the in the room, right? Short, stop right above here. Got uh, was up roughly about a uh, hour and a half, right? When I exited the first exit, so I sized my trades at two hundred dollars risk. So I took half on the first exit, and I mentioned that it was target one in the room if you took, and uh, so it was up just under. A R and a half. That was the first exit. We did a sell setup here. We made a new low and got a hard reversal here. So new low and immediately reversed. So I decided to take a quarter here, which was a little bit early. Hindsight looking back, it looks like, oh, I had a perfect entry there, right? But uh, I do think that it was a little bit early. I just didn't really like the price action that we were basing here at this $43. We broke down and immediately snapped back. Right, so I decided to take a uh, another quarter of the AMAT base sideways here. We were looking good here. This was a red bar at one point, this bottoming tail, and then we bounced back. And so I ended up covering the rest over this one minute significant pivot over this consolidation area. I covered the rest. Again, looked pretty silly here, getting shaken out here, but that's what my management says, and it continued higher anyway. Right, so if we jump out to the five minute, it didn't follow through anyway, right? Why did I get out here? Well, because we were establishing a uh, uptrend on a larger time frame, right? We made a higher low on the five minute. We we're also breaking a one minute significant pivot right at the open. Okay, so my management said if we have a one, one minute significant pivot right at the open, then I can trail the runner position there, right? And we established this uptrend and continued the uptrend. And I was looking to reshort this. I posted a call on this. It didn't trigger. I was going to reshort this under 43.95 um, here, but it didn't trigger. So it continued higher and now it's uh, coming back down. But that was the AMAT. So this runner position trailed out uh, break even, right? It made 12 bucks. But the first two exits were within the first 11 minutes, right? Wide range bar in the first 11 minutes, right? So this is a, if we look at the daily chart here, this, when it was at the lows here, that was a wide range bar, 
and we got a really nice movement here. Today's range was really nice relative to the previous days, which is really important, I think, right? And we'll bring it up again after we cover the JWN, okay? So JWN was a doji bar at the open, and then we got a inside base and a breakout, and uh, Sammy was on the mic, our... Man, I don't know why my platform is so slow right now. I'm glad I'm not looking to take any trades. Uh, it could be because I'm broadcasting here too, though. Uh, but Sammy mentioned this as a long, and this was really good. So I was in the AMAT looking for a target one because we had the one, two, three. So we were three minutes into the trade. I was looking for a target one, but I just had time to put the order in for this JWN. Now, there was one thing that made this JWN really nice here, right? We got the doji bar we talked about, and then we got the topping tail inside bar. And what really made me say that this was good was this red bar. Retested the base here, breakout higher. That was too long. I Where did I get filled here? At 11, I think I gave it 6 cents. And I had it over 56.05. Did I get filled at 11? Yeah, I got filled at 11. So I had just over the whole number here. Um, stop under 55.62 probably was the stop. Um, I sized it to 50 cents. I saw it was a little bit spready. Um, so I undersized it a little bit. It was only really a 40 cent stop. I sized it to 50 cents. Um, we got a really nice move. 1R in a matter of seconds here. I was busy with the AMAT, so as soon as we moved up to retest this, um, this came back down, so I ended up trailing out half. Um, we were up a little bit over 2R, so I took a quarter, and then I had to make a judgment call here. So I was, so here's where we are, and um, I had to make a judgment call whether or not I was going to hold a runner position possibly giving the rest of this, the runner, the last quarter back. Um, and I decided to trail it mainly because of the wide range bars that were here. Okay, so that's when I mentioned before that I'm going to make a decision. I had to, made a conscious decision to take the rest of it. Now, this did continue higher all day, which is pretty common with nice professional gaps. But the basis of this video, if we look at this chart, we, I mean, this was up, I, I didn't capture two R's out of this. I captured an R and a half because I took half at one R and I took the rest at two R's, okay? So I captured an R and a half here in four minutes, right? And it's not all about speed for me. It's not all about how, how can I make money the fastest, okay? But what I am saying is this is the opportunity that we get with professional gaps, this is why I think gaps in the analysis is so important for a day trader. This is why I really focus on gaps because we get these moves right at the open. Okay? So that was the JWN, and we continued all day. So, two things to wrap this up. Right? Those were the two trades. Uh, they were both mentioned in the black room. Uh, two things to wrap this up. One is. We get really nice moves, and, and I'm not saying we have to be careful with uh, not every professional gap. Like we have a very uh, well uh, a well documented approach to what gaps we play at the open, what we're looking at, and all of that is talked before the market opens. Okay, so all these were on the hot list before the market opens. Okay, um, so. The first thing is knowing what to do before the market opens to capture the nice move at the open. All right? So that's one thing. The second thing is, and I hear traders talk a lot about average true range, right? ATR. Well, what is the average true range? And part of the reason why I go after professional gaps is, like, look at this JWN here. Um, look at the ATGE, which is another favorite, right? On the professional gap day, we get really big moves. I mean, you could put together two, three weeks of the ATG, and we got the same range that we got in one day, right? 
And so that's why average true range isn't important to me on the gap day because I'm expecting us to have a anomal uh, anomaly and be at the far tail end of the bell curve as far as the average true range when it comes to professional gaps. And that also creates a lot of opportunity for me when I'm day trading. All right. So those are the those are the two things that I wanted to cover. And um, I had other things to do today. I had other things scheduled. So I, I went after that stuff. And um, I was able to make uh, the two and a half hours for me in the, the first, you know, whatever it was, 15 minutes or so of the open. And, um, and that was it. That was all I did today. So um, I wanted to cover why I go after professional gaps. So I hope this helps. And if you're not trading gaps and interested in trading gaps, come check us out in the black room. I mean, that's a lot of what I focus on. And we do a, a lot of good education and stuff inside the black room. And we also do a lot of good education that we, uh, that we teach um, that's even more comprehensive um, outside the black, black room. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope you guys have a great weekend. hope it was a good week. Um, and I, I did a video on when Home Depot reported how earnings season was coming to a close. But as you can see, that doesn't mean that we're not trading. And it doesn't mean that there's not opportunity, right? There's just a little bit less. Right, I only came into the open with these four gaps that I liked, right? Instead of coming into the open with ten gaps, so there's still a lot of opportunity out there. It's just staying focused and um, being prepared before the open comes. All right, thanks everybody. I hope you guys stay in process, and I will talk to you guys next week. Have a great weekend.